بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله العظيم الوهاب الغفور التواب الذي خضعت لعظمته الرقاب وذلت لجبروته السعاب وخشعت لملكوته الرقاب واستجلت بصنعته أولي الألباب ويسبح الرعد بحمده والسحاب والبرق والسراب والشجر والدواب مسبب الأسباب ومنزل الكتاب وخالق خلقه من تراب غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب لا إله إلا الله بها نحيا وبها نموت وبها نلقى الله وبها نوالي وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله أما بعد My beloved brethren, most respected elders, mothers and sisters, by the consensus of the scholars and the utterance of the Prophet wasallam, the best generation ever to have passed through the oceans of life is the generation of the Prophet. And this is not by any opinion poll or the utterances of a media anchor this is by the tongue of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the rasul says on multiple occasions khayrun nas qarni khayrul ummah qarni khayrul qurun qarni the best generation is my generation the best people my the people of my time and the question for me and you to figure out is why were they dubbed as the best of generations. But before that, it is important for you to be able to see the level of the Sahabi. Because uttering best by itself doesn't quantify it, doesn't qualify it. So I'll give you certain ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that you could gauge the level of the Sahabi. So listen to this hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَغْزُوا فِئَامٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ A group of people will be in a campaign. There will be a struggle. And it will be deadlock. This side will be able to win, nor will this side stalemate. And then the leader asks, Afikum man ra'a Rasulullah? Is there in this gathering someone that has laid eyes on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is there someone here who sahaba Rasulullah, who was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So a person will say, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am a companion of the Rasul. So the Rasul says, Allah will give you victory because amidst you exists someone that has laid eyes upon me. Do you see the sharaf of suhbah? That their level is such that by them merely existing amidst you, the gates of victory and help and assistance from the heavens opens. And then the Rasul says, a time will come, this generation will go, another generation will come, and then there will be a deadlock again. No side is victorious. So the leader will ask, Afikum man ra'a, man ra'a Rasulullah? 
is there someone in this gathering who saw a person who saw the Prophet of Allah? So they will say, a person will say, I saw a Sahabi. Huh? I saw a Sahabi. So the Rasul says, Allah will give victory because amidst you exists someone that laid eyes on someone who laid eyes on me. This is the maqam of suhba. And just so that you, you know the thought goes across our heads and hearts that why should a sahabi be at such a maqam? I will worship as much as him, give sadaqah as much as him, strive as much as him. I must be able to reach the same level. The Rasul says, عَلَيْهِ أَفْضَلُ الصَّلَاةُ وَأَتَمُّ التَّسْلِيمُ If you were to give the mountain of Uhud in gold, you've been to Hajj and Umrah, you have seen the mountain Uhud. It isn't a hill, it's a mountain. The mountain of Uhud in gold. And I will guarantee from my limited heart, None of you here will give half a mountain in gold. You know, you wouldn't give a ton. Where does it exist? Where did you get a ton and half a ton of gold? Do you understand? So it will never, but even if you did do it, the Rasul says, that if one of my companions give a handful of dates in sadaqah, your mountain of gold will not be able to match the handful of the dates of my companions. So, فَأَيْنَ النُّورُ السُّهَا مِنْ شَمْسِ الضُّحَى How do you compare the light of a candle to the glowing sun? They were the ashab of the Prophet. Listen to this hadith. The Rasul says, Tuba liman ra'ani. Glad tidings to those that saw me. And then, Tuba liman ra'a man ra'ani. Glad tidings to those that saw the ones that, that saw me. Do you see? This is maqam of suhbah. So this, then our level compared to this, you gauge it. But how did they reach this level? What were their competencies and traits and abilities and capabilities is what I want to talk about. So we could aspire to become a fraction of what they were so that we could get a fraction of what they got. And my dear ones, I searched the books and in my humble analysis, these are the points I want to share with you in the few minutes available to me. The first of the qualities of the Ashab was their Iman. Their Iman was at a level where mine and your Iman hasn't reached. First of all, what is Iman? You know, we learn it as kids. Al-Imanu Billah wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi wa Yawm Al-Akhir the tenets of Iman, to believe in, in Allah and to believe Al-Imanu Billahi and Wa Malaikatihi and the books, a lot of them are unseen. But the belief for the Ashab was a reality. For our time, it's an abstract notion. When the Rasul talked to the Ashab about the Akhirah, when he talked to them about Jannah and Jahannam, the companions believed it like as though they were in it. So when the Prophet talked about Jahannam, the ahadith record, the ashab would cry till their beard soaked wet and the water dripped to their feet. You know when that happens? When Jahannam is a reality to you greater than your current reality. There are stories of the Ashab, you know, a Sahabi went on a campaign, long campaign, away from family, wife and kids. After a long time, came back. And as is the Sunnah, and may Allah Rabbul Izzah teach me and you the Sunnah and the following of the Sunnah. Say Ameen Muslims. So as is the Sunnah, he went to the masjid first. So to inform the family, I am coming and learn this hikmah. If you travel, call home and say, listen, I'm arriving in a day's time or two days time. 
simply because a traveler when traveling imagines a reception, imagines open arms, imagines, a, do you understand me? And if you haven't informed, you come to a house in which people are busy in the daily chores. It's an anti-climax for you and a disturbance for the family. They're not in the mental state to receive you, your wife and your kids. You're in the mental state of royal treatment. It's a point of conflict. It's a flashpoint. So the Rasul taught us, inform them so that so now the wife is anticipating, the kids are anticipating, they run out to meet the dad. You can imagine the wife has prepared, you know, my husband's coming after a long time. So the husband comes, hugs and greets the kids and meets the wife and then darkness of the night falls and the wife goes to bed anticipating the husband to come. So this husband says, listen, can I just pray two rak'ah before coming to bed? Two rak'ah before coming to bed. So he started Allahu Akbar and went into Salah and zoned out of Salah at the Adhan of Fajr. So the wife says, you went, you campaigned, you were away from home and family, you came back, you met the near and dear, don't I have a haq? So he says, you do, it's true. But I started reciting the verses of Jannah and I got lost in Jannah and came out at Fajr. Do you see Jannah was a reality for them? They looked at it as you look at real estate. They gauged it as you gauge real estate. They planned for it, for it as you plan for your houses. It was a reality for them. And all aspects of the Akhirah was a reality to them. I talk to you about angels. They saw angels. بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله famous hadith of Jibreel you know a few days before the demise of the Rasul Umar ibn al-Khattab says Ibn Umar narrates from his father that we were with the Rasul a person entered the gathering شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لم يرى عليه أثر السفر an exclusive man came excessively white dark hair no sign of fatigue and travel and he sits and converses with the Prophet then gets up and leaves so the Rasul stays quiet the Ashab are perplexed who was this person and then the Rasul asks do you know who the questioner was so they said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Prophet know best. The Rasul said, This was Jibreel. They, the Sahabi is in Salah. He is reading at night and he notices his horse starts to get out of control, starts neighing and kicking. So the Sahabi gets nervous, stops the recitation. The horse becomes quiet. Lights had come down above him, the lights went back up. He started reciting again, lights came down, horse goes crazy, so he stops again, finishes from salah, perplexed, in the morning tells the Rasul, this is what happened. So the Prophet said, angels came down to listen to your recitation. Had you were to recite till the morning, people would have seen them. Do you see, what is an abstract idea for you was a reality for them. So the Iman was at a level where mine and yours hasn't reached and my Allah Rabbul Izzah increase our Imans and with that Iman they became superhumans. Wallahi al-Azim the Ashab faced situations, conditions, challenges that if any ordinary men were to face they would crumble. I will give you instances so this the battle of the campaign of Khandaq. 10,000 plus have come to attack little Medina. And Medina, fully grown men, 1,400. How many have come against them? 10,000 plus. Not to talk and have coffee, for annihilation, for destruction. So you would expect you know, for morale to be 
all time low how do, you know they will take my house and burn you, uh, the, the building and take my wife and, and my it, it's anxiety and the Quran describes it إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرُ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظَّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ ابْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Remember when they came from above you and from behind you and remember when your eyes grew wide and panic and the hearts were beating at the throats do you remember the difficult times difficult times and yet what is the condition on camp so you hear them singing اللهم لولا أنت مهتدينا ولا تصدقنا ولا صلينا فأنزل اللهم السكينة علينا وثبت أقدامنا إلا قينا Oh Allah, there's no guidance but your guidance. Had you were not to guide us, we wouldn't know salah in siyam. The morale is good. نحن الذين بايعنا محمدا اللهم لا عيش إلا عيش الآخرة فاغفر اللهم للأنصار والمهاجرة At a time an annihilation and this didn't last one or two days for 40 long days this lasted So what made them you know able to withstand difficulty like that their iman their belief in Allah Ja'far ibn Abi Talib was sent on a mission Reach there, there's, you know, unimaginable odds against him. The whole Roman legions are standing to face him. What do you anticipate this handful of people from Arabia to do in front of this? Like You would panic, you would run, you would hide, you, you would do all the normal strategies of war. But what is the Sahabi of the Prophet? What is, what is his mental state? Do you see? And, and the timeless words of, of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib recorded in the annals of history, you know? Um, timeless. And he, and he meets it full on without let or hindrance. Cause the, the challenge is acute, but the iman is at a level where he was able to face the challenge. They became superhumans with their iman. And in every field, in every field, you look at uh, uh, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. He says, I woke up 16 times in one night to write the ahadith of the Prophet. So he would write, fall asleep, turn the light off, go to sleep. Then, what about the ahadith of the Prophet? It would wake him up again. He would write some more till he's falling asleep. Then turn the 16. What drives a person like that? So academically they achieved, politically they achieved, militarily they achieved. Why? Because the driver, the, the motivator, the faith in the akhirah made this world easy to succumb, easy to, uh, you know, to rein in. So my dear ones, unfortunately my time is finished and I have four or five points to talk about. Uh, but a simple parting advice is learn and study the life of the Prophet and study the life of the Ashab and you will find in them the best of role models for life. Whatever your discipline, whatever your field, you will get intrinsic motivation and clear tangible strategies for success. Simple things which will change your life. For example, waking up early. I researched the lives of successful people. All successful people wake up early, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Including prime ministers, you know. Anyone that's achieved something in the world, they wake up early. And the Rasul taught us 14 and a half centuries ago that the barakah for my ummah is in the early morning. And for himself, قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Wake up even before Fajr. 
But unfortunately, I look at the Ummah now. You know, for some, Fajr comes and goes, and Alhamdulillah, he's enjoying his sleep. And others wake up for Fajr, you know, uncomfortable. Let's finish this quickly so I can go back to sleep. Not a successful path, not haram, but an issue of less than ideal. And had we were to align our lives to the line of life of the Prophet and the life of the companions, Allah will give you greater success than He has already given you. May Allah give you success in this life and in the next. فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتِ إِن تَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَإِن تَكُوا سَيِّئَةً فَمِنَ نَفْسِ وَشَيْطَانِ ادعو الله وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفر العباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم من بعد عرضا فمن أحبهم فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغض أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأجل وأهم وأتم وأفضل وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الرحمن لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله